Hey guys, George here, and I just had to show off what I've been working on because this is pretty glorious. So, uh, I've talked before about how I'm working on the economy, the dynamic economy, and the world over overhaul. Uh, this is sort of the placeholder loading screen that exists right now, and um, what you can see is that there generating sectors, and uh, there's items in all the different sectors, and it's sort of uh, figuring out where all the train is, what stations there would be, what all the economic nodes are in those various sectors, and then uh, once it's kind of uh, figured out what's there, it either stores it to the disk or compacts it in memory so that there's more space. Eventually it sort of sets up the single player game and puts you into the world, uh, which is where you get to this. Uh, at this point, um, I'm just going to skip the intro. And uh, it's going to lock up real good here for a second, because right now what it's actually doing is uh, initializing the faction, which is spawning all the trade ships that are going to fly around the universe, buying and selling stuff. So, uh, here I'm respawning in my station. Alright, and I'm just going to cheat by going over to the cartography room. here, and here's the new world map. Look at all those stations. Every single one of those is a space station, and every one of the little red things is a ship, and they are buying and selling things, and I have a little interface uh, thingy here now, so I can see that this is a titanium mine, and it is selling titanium ore and silica ore, and it is buying assorted parts and snacks. and. Uh, best part about this is I can hover over other things and compare uh, what profits I would make for running trade routes between all these different things. So if I were to, for instance, uh, take, say I'm going to go from a titanium mine to a mega mall, uh, it looks like I would be selling at a loss if I bought titanium ore or silicate ore from the mine. Uh, however, um, so, while hovering over here, you can see that assorted parts, which are bought at the titanium mine, uh, can be purchased at the Mega Mall, and they're cheaper at the Mega Mall than they than what the titanium mine is willing to sell. So it says over there, 1,973 uh, profit per slot. Now, all of these numbers totally placeholder. Like I just got this working a couple minutes ago, and I had to make a video to show off how cool it was. Um, so, probably the names of everything and the values of everything will change. Um, but, so if I go back over here, so here's your start sector. There's little ships flying around. Um, and these are, of course, real ships. So here's a gold mine, for instance, and you've got a, a refinery. So gold mines produce both gold ore and carbon ore. And a refinery, of course, will buy carbon ore uh, and refine it into graphite, and so uh, the gold mine, which is producing carbon very slowly, um, will still sell that carbon uh, to a refinery, and if I do that trade route, I can make 322 units of profit per slot. That's per sort of inventory slot available in my ship. So, uh, you know what? Heck, let's go spawn a ship and try it, because, you know, why not? So I'm going to spawn sort of a simple ship with very few cargo slots, and go to my ship. In a, in a future version, I think we're going to totally overhaul the uh, player station. Probably should have turned off like some of the debugging stuff and re, you know, loaded the art. So we have some new art assets that aren't in this, but you know what? Screw it. I was just so excited to have this working that I had to show it off, so. Uh, so I'm going... Um, so there's me, and there's a station I want to go to, that gold mine. So I'm just going to fly really fast. There's the gold mine. And uh, it looks like...
there an NPC ship here? Oh yeah, this guy. This guy up here, he actually just bought gold from here, so... Or bought something from here, I don't know where he's going. Well, I could probably try to guess. It looks like he's going to a smelter. Yeah, that would make sense. Uh, there's a refinery and a smelter, so he probably... That ship probably bought gold, or, yes, because look, the, uh, the quantity is much lower now, although it wasn't very high to begin with, and uh, he's probably taking it to the smelter. Um, which means that if I went and I blew up that ship, I should see gold. You know what? I have debugging commands, don't I? Yes, I have debugging commands. Let's go blow up that ship and see if gold ore comes out. Uh, come here, ship. I don't have any guns on this little ship, which is why I need the debugging commands. Uh, but if I say, hey, stop having engines, he'll be all like, I don't have any engines. And then I can go up to him and just... I don't know, cut him in half, kind of, and hey, look at all this stuff flying out of him. And then I open up my cargo scoop, and I scoop up some of that cargo because I'm a pirate. My cargo bay is obviously full at this point. And, oops, let's see what's in my cargo. One second. Yep, whole bunch of gold ore. And, since I'm obviously the best pirate in the universe, being able to kill people without even pissing them off, because I shot them with debugging commands. I don't have to fight his buddies there. They were escorting him. But I have a cargo bay full of ore. Gold ore, even. So, screw that gold mine. I'm going to go straight to the smelter and see what they will give me for this ore. Nah, overshot it a bit. I don't have to, like, carry the gold myself. Uh, I can put it in my inventory, I guess, to hold a little bit more of it, but... So, um, this room will sort of detect my ship's cargo. Uh, this is a new room that has been added to all the different stations. It's like a uh, trade depot. You can see it's got a whole bunch of stuff on pallets and racks and so on and so forth, but you kind of go in here and you can trade with the station. And it brings up this screen. And... <laughs> I guess I wasn't finished with this screen. These colored things are supposed to be the buttons that you click on to switch between the shop tab and the buyback tab. Obviously they're supposed to be over there, and instead they're over there. The reason that they're colored is so that I can see where they are and reposition them, which apparently I never did. Uh, but the shop is telling me that uh, it sells got gold wire, uh, iron ingots, which has the wrong icon, and titanium ingots, which also has the wrong icon, and uh, I have gold ore, so I'm just going to pick that up and drag it over there. It says, how many do you want to sell? And I say, I want to sell 112 of them, because that's probably how many I have. And holy cow, I can make a whole bunch of monies. Uh, sell it. I didn't sell all of it, probably because it's broken. Let's just right click it. Yeah, I can sell the last eight. There we go. Sell that. And I've sold all my ore. I can't buy it back because it's a trade good. It's not buyback tab is only for uh, like if you sell your repair tool or whatever. Um, so I made a whole bunch of money and I have 20,000 monies now. Uh, which is exciting because I could use that also. I don't know why. I could, obviously there's stuff I could buy here. Uh, so now if I wanted I could buy gold wire or tight any ingots or iron ore. Um, I'm going to go over to this command console uh, because it'll let me sort of uh, one of these maybe, no, none of those are wired to the outside universe. So I have to go back to my ship. Um, I'm going to decide what I want to buy here. Uh, I'll go to the map. And so I am at this smelter and I would like to buy something here. So I might be buy iron ingots. Um, or titanium. So you can see that because I just started the game, and because the initial values are all set stupid, um, all the stations are low on everything, and so all the prices are all screwed up. Uh, but right, so right now I can buy uh, iron ingots. Um, it's going to be a lot more expensive than it might normally be because the supply is so low, but 
I happen to know that obviously anywhere else that's buying this stuff uh, will likely be charging a lot, or sorry, offering a lot of money for it simply because they're also low on supplies. So, uh, refinery doesn't want it. Uh, an electronics lab will use iron, and it looks like if I were to bring gold, I could actually make at 27 grand per slot. Um, materials factory, nothing there. So, uh, so I might at this point select the electronics lab and say, hey, I'm gonna take uh, iron and gold over there, uh, and buy a whole bunch of that and fly over there. Uh, in fact, let's do it. Oh, <laughs> this guy's waiting for his turn to dock, I guess. Uh, well, you know what? You're just gonna have to keep waiting because I want to go buy gold. As much gold as this station will sell me. Gold. You know what? Pack it all in. 311. Sure, why not? And uh, the price, of course, should go up slightly because they had 900 of them and I bought some of them. But, what else? Well, that goes directly to my ship, by the way. I've now spent all of my money. I have 35 left, so. Uh, it's fortunate that I get ships and ship equipment for free. Okay, here. You can have the dock now. Go. Go ahead and dock. Are they both waiting to dock? Damn, this is a profitable station, I guess. Whatever. I'm out of here. Got an electronics lab to go to. Except I've now forgotten where I'm going. I think it was this direction. So. Let's see, where am I? Electronics lab. That's where I'm going. Yeah, it's kind of far away. Yeah, so I think that, uh... I think that having a dynamic economy in a game where the interior of every spaceship is traversable will add an interesting level of depth to space piracy. I mean, you know, space piracy is more fun when there's actual loot, I guess, say. Uh, so, you know, you can see I kind of have a golden number here which represents uh, the, the sort of amount of money that I've uh, acquired. Uh, a lot of the upgrades that in the old version would just sort of drop um, or be in the cargo bay of random ships. Uh, those upgrades are now uh, something that you would go and buy. Uh, I think you saw earlier I was hovering my mouse over a mega mall. Uh, you'll go to these mega mall locations and they'll have shops that sell all sorts of cool stuff including um, research blueprints for Everything from new ships to new weapons, and uh, sort of what what will be available at any individual shop will be um, random anytime you go to that shop. Uh, but they'll be relatively cheap uh, to purchase the blueprint as compared to the price of uh, researching the blueprint. So if you go to a mega mall and you find a cool blueprint, you can usually just sort of buy it immediately and then research it later, uh, assuming you have some money on hand. Um, since I'm now selling gold at a huge profit. Uh, <laughs> wow, I really got to tune these numbers, but yeah, I just so I just doubled my money, essentially. Uh, so uh, you see that when I sell the gold, it doesn't go into uh, sort of this screen. That's because um, this is a electronics uh, factory, lab, whatever. Uh, they use gold to make uh, field coils and electronic components, both of which have the wrong icon. That's uh, my fault. Uh, and since they use the gold to make these things, uh, when I sell gold to them, they don't offer to sell it back to me, because they never sell gold. They just buy gold, use it, and make these things. Likewise, they wouldn't buy field coils, coils from me. Um, so, I don't know. If people decide that they're going to go to uh, one of these stations and buy something they don't want, and then you know have buyer's remorse and be like, I demand that the station buys it back from me, uh, they'll probably force me to code up a solution for that, and I have to say, this trade screen was actually a surprisingly huge pain in the ass to program as it was, but uh, I'll probably eventually do it. So, uh, oh, there's a door missing there. Neat. Well, isn't everything just going wrong? But um, regardless, uh, dynamic economy in Wayward Terran Frontier, zero falls. Uh, that's what it's going to be about, and the patch is actually going out to testers, I don't know, maybe tomorrow? I mean, obviously there's a lot of stuff I should fix, but, uh, 
people are pretty excited to try it out. So, and I'm pretty excited to get feedback on all the horrible things that are broken that I have to fix. Thanks for watching.